Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, let's talk about my idea for main options. I may or may not do it, but I'll just share with you my thinking framework. So let's recap back to April, my April options strategy, where I share about selling a core option on Tesla when it was at 1,001, 1,000 to 1,001, because I'm not bullish on the stock market and I normally don't sell core option on Tesla. I normally don't sell core option on Tesla because Tesla is a growth stock. And if Tesla were to rally, it's going to rally 30 to 40% one shot in a matter of one to two weeks. So usually when you sell call option, to me it's very risky. But again, I, I connected the dots and I feel that I explained to you that there are a few problems I see that there are a few major problems in fact that I see that the stock market is not going to be bullish anytime soon. In short, it is something about the multipolar world, inverted yield curve and war causing the cost of commodity food, raw material, everything to supply chain, disruption, everything, all this are going to cause a fragmented world. So what I suggested for April was to sell a call option and sell a pull option. So when I sell a call option, I am putting up my Tesla shares as collateral. So when I sell a Tesla call option, I'm putting 100 of my Tesla shares as collateral to fund premiums and I put it on a price that I feel it doesn't touch. And I suggested selling a put option that has the ability to withstand a certain kind of fall. So I suggested uh, selling a put option at $760. You can check out my video up here. So my goal was to minimize leverage and I wanted to farm some premium. And I want to share with you that thinking framework. So in options, it is all about thinking framework. It's about how you think and how to minimize your risk. Because risk will translate to, risk will translate to profit. Understanding what form of risk you are taking and have plans for all these kind of different scenarios that will play out. I don't do options every month because options is a probability game. I only, I only do options when the probability of the desired outcome is quite high for me and that's when I will take the shot. And in options, it is important to know, understand that you can lose, but it is okay to lose the battles, but don't lose the war. So again, let's see if my April options work out for me personally. So again, if you were to sell call option at 1000 to 1003, congrats to you, you can take profit now. The market just crashed, you know. So again, I suggested for selling put option, I didn't want to choose at the money put. I chose a safer put option with a lower strike price of 760 because that is a support area that I remember. Because that is a crucial support area for Tesla. And let's say if you were to sell a put option back then in April, now will be about expiry and you should be able to expire safely. Even if you and get the full premium. So let's say a 760 put back then, I think it was 3K USD premium. If I did sell the put, and a $30 premium can be used to offset my break-even price, and that would be 730 USD break-even. So generally, that's how I do options, you know. I try to come up with what I see, anticipate for the next few months, work backwards accordingly, and then I will see what is the best solution I have right now, and see if I want to do it. So again, that was my thinking framework for April, and I didn't find a low-risk entry to do all this, but ge generally, the theory is correct. The theory right now is correct to the current outcome. Now, Tesla really fell and it was good to be on minimum leverage and selling a call option because you're not going to get called away. Because the market is trending now and your, your call is here, you are not going to get called away. And you get the, and you get the premium from here and you get the premium from here. And you get the premium from selling the call option and you get the premium from selling the put option. So right now, in, for me, uh, what I suggest in real time is to probably be on the buying call or selling put. Or just do nothing if you feel that there is further weakness. I see some people suggesting selling call option at $800 or like at this $780 range. You are just asking for trouble. You don't understand what you are doing. Don't follow the narrative that everyone is in. You know, when everyone is panicking, then you are panicking and you are, you are telling people to sell call now. This is the worst time to sell call. You are not getting enough. You are not taking enough reward for you to bear this kind of risk. So for, you, so for me now, if everyone is panicking, it will be the best time for me to look to start buying leaps. So if everyone is panicking now, it will be a good time for me to think of how to buy leaps, you know. And I ask myself a few questions. What is the maximum time frame I can buy? And how much premiums am I paying? Am I overpaying for the premiums? I will ask myself a few questions. Is where will Tesla be in one year or where will Tesla be in two years? Or So ideally, I want to buy leaps that have the maximum time frame so that I slow down time decay and I don't want to pay so high of a premium. But the thing is that that is usually very hard to do because theoretically, when it crashes, the IV is very high you are, and you have to pay high premium to be able to buy this call option. So that's the tricky part. But definitely 
do not be on selling call. Now is not the time to sell call. Sell call is over already. That was why I mentioned in April. You know, I've already foresee this, this kind of nonsense coming at May. Like the goal is not to be right all the time, but the goal is like to have the the right thinking framework and don't even if I have the right thinking framework, I didn't execute the trade because like I didn't feel the the risk to reward was worth it. So now selling put and buying call. Let's say I look at the six hundred twenty days buy call option. For so now I'm looking at January nineteen twenty twenty four, the strike price for eight hundred, the premium is two hundred fifty five dollars. I'll ask myself and have some valuation model asking myself, what will Tesla be at January nineteen twenty twenty four, and ask myself if the premium is worth to pay for this call option. The implied volatility is sixty six percent, which means I have to pay quite a high premium to own this. Let's say conservative. Tesla is worth thousand seven hundred dollars at January nineteen twenty twenty four. My my break even cost is about one zero five five, so you'll be one seven zero zero minus one zero five five. So I have a potential profit of six forty five times a hundred shares, which is about sixty four point five k. No, I'm just running through with you how I think on the real time. I don't. This is not a trade plan or what. But let's say if I sell put now is if I sell put for thirty days. If I were to sell a put option now at seven sixty, I will be receiving sixty dollar premium, and my break even price will be seven hundred dollars, and I know that the next uh, crucial support level is six ninety. So actually, that is not a bad trade. Also, again, I just want to share with you a certain thing because I I see people when things crashes, then their narrative is like it will crash further. But when it was at thousand one thousand dollars, nobody is telling you that things will crash, and I've been the one saying that like things will crash. It is not going to be good. But at seven hundred dollar, then they start following the narrative and saying things will crash. That is, it's too late already, ma. So we, I, how I see things is I assess things through probability. So let's say if money is tightening, we understand that now money is tightening and what is going on is so what is happening right now is that things is becoming fragmented because there's a war, and we might become we might go into a multipolar world because our world is very integrated and when the whole world is so integrated and combined together. It is very hard for us to say let's not do business because we depend on each other for all the raw material costs, and I think this is what is happening. The raw material cost is going to skyrocket, on top of inflation, on top of money becoming more and more worthless or worthless. So there is a risk of hyperinflation, and that's why I was calling for this crash. So now that it happens, we have to assess a few things. You know, is it going to be a GFC or COVID kind of crash? And we understand. From usually this kind of why why crashes always hap always happen, so we un so we assess this through probability, you know. We so again I assess this through probability when this kind of thing happen is why two thousand eight and COVID crash and nineteen ninety eight or nineteen ninety nine or two thousand ha happen, and it is always within like ten years period. It is because of long term debt cycle, you know. If you study Ray Dalio's debt cycle, there's short term debt cycle, there's long term debt cycle. I feel that this is more of a short term debt cycle, so it is might not be COVID level or it might not be it might not be GFC level kind of crash, but I might be totally wrong. I just wanna put this out first, just assessing the probability. Will it crash further? Probably, but will it crash too much? I'm not so sure, but be safe, lah. Don't don't leverage. That's what I would say. Yeah. If you don't leverage, and then you just survive this, uh, just a storm. Uh. So in May, this is what I'm looking to do. Probably buy call or sell put. Looks fine to me. Looks like a low risk entry to sell a put. So if, for, <laughs> so if I sell put at seven sixty, if I'm wrong, I roll to six ninety, then I roll to six fifty. So for selling put, if I'm wrong, I can roll. If I buy call, and if I have the holding power. And Tesla in twenty twenty four will most likely be very attractive, but not maybe not in January. So maybe buying call, I will wait a bit, or I will do short term buy call. Yeah, I will do short term buy call, and I will take the money, invest in the long term buy call. I want the leaps. I want the further leaps to be available to me in September, so that I can buy a longer time frame. I see. I feel that a longer time frame will give me a better window of having Tesla go back to its normal price. Or even higher, their growth rate. 
Yeah, I, <clears throat> I personally believe that 2000 is not a problem, but the valuations might not pay for it. So these are the things I look out for. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, if you guys like this kind of video where I just share about my real-time thinking, my thinking framework of how I trade options, just let me know in the comment section down below. As usual, help me like this video and help me subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. And I'll continue working my other stuff. Okay, see you.